Hey everyone, this is just a little video on uh, some tips that will help you become better at speedball. Um, the first thing you're going to want to work at, and I found it very important, is uh, your stamina. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have, obviously, good stamina. You're going to want to run a lot, you're going to want to do sprints, you're going to want to work on anything that's cardio-wise that can help you uh, build your lungs, build your lung capacity, and uh, also uh, help your heart so it slows down the heart rate, you're not always overexerting yourself when you're only running a kilometer or something. You just want to keep running, you want to do, uh, like I said, sprints and stuff. Uh, it'll help you build up your heart and build up your lungs and it will help you on the paintball field because, as we all know, it's a very uh, very fast-paced sport and you need all the stamina and energy you have. Um, other things that really don't have to do with um, how physically fit you are is laning. Uh, laning is a very important part of the sport. Um, essentially what laning is, is off the break. So when you have your gun, you know, set up this way, off the break, you will go and you'll uh, pick your spot where you're going to shoot. You already have a predetermined spot off the break, you're going to shoot that way. And you have to be able to raise your marker up in a, in a perfect angle and shoot the other team out so that they can't uh, make it up the field. Um, good laning drills are uh, having your whole team ready, your whole team set up. Um, and as soon as the whistle blows, you go and you uh, run and gun, uh, or you can stand still. You can run and gun or stand still and shoot at a target um, across the field. Say it's a say it's a little pole or something. Um, for every time you can hit the pole, that you definitely could hit a uh, person. And then you can also set up running drills where uh, you have one team shooting and one team just running to their primary objectives. And uh, after you've done that. You can also have it so both teams are shooting at each other like a full game and you're going to see if uh, each team's doing their job, leaning their person out that they're trying to get, whether they're going to the snake or going to the D1, you want to be able to make sure you can lean the person out. <clears throat> Another thing that you're going to want to know and uh, get better at is how you look on the field in certain bunkers. Um, this is called body language. So yeah, body language, uh, it's how you look behind your bunker. So if you're uh, cross field and you're trying to stay as tight to the bunker as possible because somebody's shooting at you from, uh, say, you're, like you're in, I don't say from the D corner and you're on the opposite side, you're in the snake corner or something, you're trying to stay as far to the right in the situation as possible. You're trying to make sure you're the slimmest as you can in the bunker and you're just tied up against it. And you need to make sure that you're able to shoot at your target still without being exposed on the other side. So you always have to watch your body language. It's something very important in the game. Uh, many people will slip up a little bit and uh, end up getting shot in their pod pack because they weren't watching the way their body language was. Uh, snap shooting is also a very key element in the speedball. You need to make sure you're able to uh, quickly snap out, shoot a few shots off, and hit your target from uh, wherever you are. Um, it's a very hard thing to perfect. You just got to spend uh, tons and tons of time just perfecting it, you know going out behind a, a bunker, shooting a couple shots off, seeing if you can consistently hit your target. Um, you can easily practice this with cones. Um, you can have a cone across the field. You can, uh, you know, have your gun ready behind the bunker. Go out, shoot one shot. If you hit it, then you uh, make it uh, go back, like go back 10 feet or something. So yeah, actually having the, the cone close is obviously good at the start. And then every time you hit it, every time you can snap out, shoot it dead on and snap back in, that means that you should put the cone back until you can't keep missing. And as soon as you start to miss, um, stay at that or move it forward again and then just get good at uh, shooting that distance and then keep moving back like I said until uh, you feel that you're comfortable and you can shoot almost the whole field with snap shooting. But obviously in a situation you're going to want to be a little closer when you're doing a snap battle but uh, it's still good to know how to snap from far away uh, and keep your uh, mirror in so that you can bump up or you can help your team bump up. Uh, another thing that obviously is important to paintball is well, speedball too in general is uh, sliding. Um, you're going to want to know how to do a proper hip slide, proper uh, snake dive uh, like a superman if you're in the snake. Um, just dives in general. Um, you can look at things like one with a gun. Um, the videos they do there are very good and they teach you how to slide properly and obviously there's Dynasty Dissected and all those other videos. I'm not going to get too much into diving or the technical aspects of it. But diving is very important and hip sliding I think is one of the most important ones. You're going to want to learn that right off the bat. Make sure you do that well, otherwise you can blow out your knee, and that's something you're not going to want to do, obviously. Um, communication on the field, that's another issue. Um, you're going to need to be loud, you're going to need to be clear, you need to communicate with your team, otherwise you're probably going to uh, 
and you're going to lose where everyone is, you're going to not know what's going on during the game, and you're going to get confused easily and end up leading to bad mistakes. So you're going to want to be, like I said, loud, you're going to be clear, you're going to want to make sure you're always in constant communication. Well, not necessarily always, but you want to make sure you're always communicating with your teammates, and you're going to want to, like, you know, if someone gets out, you're going to say, G1, um, or like Mike says, Monday, 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 and you yell that several times to make sure your team hears, and you try to get them to relay it across the field so that uh, your whole team knows, because if you say it once and nobody hears it, then you're pretty much useless, and they still might think that there's five people on the field instead of four because you got somebody out. So make sure you're clear. Make sure you, you turn away actually to talk to the person. You don't just speak forward because that's just going to get, uh, the noise is just going to get displaced by all the other noise out there. So make sure you're actually turning to your teammates and you're yelling across the field uh, while you're still trying to shoot paint or focus on the enemy. But it's uh, definitely a, a tough skill to learn. It takes a long time working with your team to actually get good at it. And it takes a while for your teammates to become comfortable communicating with each other and trusting each other. So just work on that. Do some drills like that where people are just shooting or yelling. And uh, try to focus on telling somebody what's going on while trying to pay attention uh, yourself with what's going on in the game. Um, being a team player, obviously that's also a very important aspect of the game. Don't try to be the hero. Don't just run up the field right off the break looking stupid and trying to be cool and just going all the way to the 50, like just shooting everyone, just trying to be the best, like that's not going to help. You do what you're, uh, you've you been told to do at the start, you do what you, your plan, you follow through with it. Everyone has a little plan, you just try to do your, your part of the plan as best as you can. And if things open up, if you see a move that you actually could do that could end up helping your team out a lot, obviously do it, but don't just try to be the hero, don't try to be the glory hog. Um, just, you know, share uh, the glory with your team. Um, they've helped you get this far, you want to obviously uh, show some respect and not be a douchebag on the field. Um, also knowing when to bump, that's a very important uh, subject in uh, speedball also. Um, obviously if somebody is laning you and uh, you have uh, paint coming in on your left side, so you're shooting on your right side and there's paint on your left side, you're not going to want to move to your left side and try to bump up into snake or something, uh, say you're in a snake insert. Obviously you're going to want to put your mirror in first or whoever's shooting at you, you're going to try to put them in as fast as you can and you're going to bump. Um, the best time to bump actually is right off the break. So say you run to snake off the break, get as far up the field as you can before the enemy team uh, puts paint on you or uh, shoots you. So if you're, uh, you get made it to the snake off the break uh, and you see nobody down the tape shooting at you, obviously bump up as far as you can right off the bat so that you can get uh, as far up the field and create as much pressure on the enemy team as possible. Uh, with doing this, you will be able to obviously take a lot of guns off your teammates so they can make their bumps up the field and you'll also be creating pressure and you'll have good shots on the enemy. Uh, team, so that's obviously a good thing. Um, and it also helps a lot if you have a back player. If you have back players or other players backing you up, then you're able to make moves a lot easier and uh, you can feel a lot less.